McKelvey and Rhodes and committee members Eric Gleason with Next Air Energy. What is what is your position with Next Era? Um, well, I have two two jobs basically. I'm president of Next Air Energy Transmission and president of Next Air Energy Hawaii. Could you tell me why is Next Era testifying against the bill? Well, we think uh, we think it's not in the public interest to take the option of a cable off the table. And when the bill, if you read it, <clears throat> if you read the language in the bill where it's talking about this being premature, it's not talking about it not ever happening, but it's talking about it being premature at this point. And if you could comment on that, why do you feel it's mature? Um, I'm, forgive me, Representative Thielen, I don't have a copy in front of me, but I, th I think what it says is that based on public input, it's premature. Thank you. Uh, yeah. It says, uh, it says, however, there are significant community concerns associated with the development of an undersea cable. The legislature therefore concludes that the authorization given to the Public Utilities Commission related to the undersea cable was premature. Now so I think. My question to you was the bill <clears throat> does not say don't ever put in a cable. The bill says it's premature at this point. Why does next charge. era. Pardon me? It's a surcharge. That's what I want to boil down to. This is taking away the ability to levy a surcharge for the inner island cable. Why do you think that it, we should give this ability to have the surcharge when even HECO itself, to which the this consolidation or merger, whatever, hasn't gone through forward, they, they've looked at the undersea cable and have felt that it isn't worth pursuing. Why do we need to keep a surcharge or the potential for one on the books now? So Ch Chair McKelvey, I'm not a lawyer, but I've, I have read the, the original uh, many times. Um, I think it does a number of things, one of which is create a, a mechanism for a surcharge so that a, actually a third party, another utility, um, not necessarily Hawaiian Electric, could build the cable and then receive compensation for it. I think that's just one aspect of the bill or the law. I'm, I'm sorry, Representative Thielen, I'm not sure I fully addressed your question. Okay, let me try it again. Uh, why would next era feel or be, an, be opposed to something that doesn't prevent a cable from ultimately being constructed but says that it's premature at this point? And why does next era feel it is not premature? Well, I, th um, I, I guess I don't interpret this that way. I think what this bill would do is undo the legislation that was passed a little over two years ago, which uh, empowers the commission to um, certificate a, an inter island cable utility and a number of associated things with that, including the, um, you know, including the cost recovery of that. So I think this would basically undo what was already done, and I, um, I don't see that as being in the public interest. Go back again to the language on page one of the bill. Yes. And what it's saying is. It's premature at this point. Now, why does next era feel it is not premature? What does next era have to make it oh. not be premature? Um, well, uh, okay. So we think we actually disagree with, I guess you call this the preamble, where it says it's premature, therefore we think we should undo the law. The reason for that uh, is a couple of things. First of all, uh, there have been um, four or five studies that have been done um, of the cable and whether it could potentially be in the public interest. Um, the Consumer Advocate's done one, DBED has done one, or commissioned, they both commissioned studies. Um, GE's done some work, um, we've done some work, um, and Hawaiian Electric's done some work. And four out of the five of those have said they believe it's in the public interest based on the information available today. Now I will say, and we've been very clear about this, over the past, you know, since we've announced the merger and even going back to, to September before the merger was announced, we've said, um, you know, there is new information. The new information is that Hawaiian Electric filed uh, their power supply improvement plans with the commission in August, which said that in, in their estimation, the cable was no longer cost effective. Now, we don't have all the information or the analysis that they did. 
We're open-minded about it. We don't definitively conclude at this point that it is or isn't in the public interest, but I can't agree with the statement that it is necessarily premature, whether it's based on uh, significant community concerns that, that are addressed in here or whether it's based on, uh, you know, Hawaiian Electric's analysis. Okay, I, uh, real quickly though, forget the preamble. Look at the actual statutory changes. It doesn't undo any of the existing act. It undoes one section, which is the assessment of this fee for this undersea cable thing. So I have a hard time seeing how this bill, the actual guts, which amends only the surcharge portion, undoes the entire PUC's undersea cable initiative. I think what it does is very smartly preclude the assessment of a fee upon the ratepayers until there is a solid, well thought out plan, which would then we can revisit the issue statutorily again. That's so, to me what the guts of the bill says right there. It's taking out section 13 and renumbering the other one. So, um, Chair McKelvey, if you're right, um, I probably need to write new testimony. I don't know that we necessarily would have an issue with that. But my understanding and what I've been advised that is that actually this bill would undo um, the bill from just over two years ago. And I guess when I look at things, and I, I don't know that this is right, but there are parts of this like section six that, um, well, I'm not, I'm not sure. Well, maybe what we can do is it, if you could help us by getting us specifically where in the bill that it does yeah. undo the, but I think the concern from this committee in wanting to explore this legislation is in fact, well, to my mind, we're just taking out the subsection which allows the assessment of this fee. Yeah. And to me, that's very pragmatic given that there's all sorts of alternatives and studies and conclusive data on the yeah. table. And Chair McKelvey, I know I'm not in a position to ask questions, but there are some lawyers in the audience. It may be that someone can point to the part of this that undoes the cable or maybe that uh, I have not been well advised. We can continue talking about that. Let me let the other members ask questions here. I'm sorry for jumping ahead of the gun here. Uh, thank, you, Vice Chair Woodson. thank you, Chair. Um, respectfully, this merger or acquisition has not even been approved yet, but you're here testifying on policy mm -hmm. as it relates to Hawaii. Do you think that it's appropriate for you to be even testifying at this hearing? Um, Vice Chair Woodson, um, I guess we have been pursuing this cable for a few years. We feel like we have um, some knowledge of the situation. We want to do the right thing for Hawaii. Um, so we felt that, you know, testifying would be, would be constructive. I defer to you as to whether you think that's inappropriate. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, sir. Chair Rhodes. Thanks. Uh, thanks for coming tonight. Um, uh, my question, I guess, is more of a uh, not to do with the bill itself, but what do you, what do you see as the advantages if, if you were allowed to build a cable or if, if, the, if the surcharge was still there available for the cable, what's the advantages of having a cable? And where would it go? What, do you, what are we talking about? We're we talking about Maui to Oahu or Maui to Oahu and then on down to the Big Island? Or, or what, what kind of system you th are you – I, I realize it's all, yeah. it's all premature, but – if, if, you, if it weren't premature, what would you be contemplating? So, so Chair Rhodes, a uh, couple things. First of all, um, I think what this legislation was in, intended to do was make it possible for a variety of parties to compete to construct a cable and for the commission to, to um, you know, have the framework in place to move that forward. Um, so it wasn't necessarily the utility. In fact, I think my understanding is most people involved at this time did not expect the utility would do anything other than run a request for proposals of third parties. So, so this is an enabler of okay, multiple the, options for a cable. What, what's the advantage of having a cable? Yeah, and in terms of, um, of that piece of it, the idea, uh, well, this is this has evolved over time. So I think when this legislation was first passed, when the original le legislation was passed, the idea was, or, or at least the, the genesis was the big wind projects, um, you know, wind projects on Lanai or wind projects on Molokai. I know we have, we know, I know we have some people here who uh, are not big fans of that idea. And then um, uh, what we call a generation tie or call it an extension cord from the neighbor island to Oahu. Okay, that was the original idea. Um, the, another idea um, that actually, you know, started at least from from our perspective with 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 um, a statement by the chair of the PUC chair Marine, uh, Mina Marita at the time is why don't we have a two-way cable uh, why don't we have a two-way cable um, you know linking different islands in the state and when you know, we were one of the parties that looked at that and said actually that could make some sense so we looked at something between Maui Island and Oahu 
and, and, and I'm, again, just speaking for next era, what we've proposed is that that could make more sense than a, than so a neighbor out. What's the advantage of having the cable? Right. So what the cable does is a couple things. Um, the two-way cable. So the one-way cable, it's obvious. If you think you can bring uh, wind energy plus a cable cheaper to Oahu uh, and, and or integrate more renewable energy by doing that than just having Oahu rely on its own resources, um, that, that was kind of the idea. The idea behind the two-way cable is a little different. Um, it, it allows the both islands fundamentally to share the resources that each has. Um, in the analysis that we've done and that others have done, um, it suggests that basically you can, through a combination of the sharing of fossil resources across both islands, as well as integrating additional renewable resources, that you can get to a better place in terms of more renewable energy, less oil, and lower cost by having the cable. Lower, I think lower rate. and lower all-in cost to, to customers. But but I will say, uh, to give Hawaiian Electric you know their due. Uh, their more recent analysis suggests that is not the case. So I think that is still something that reasonable people can differ on. Thank you. Thanks very much. Go ahead. Uh, Representative, is, is there any place, in, sorry, any place in the world where they have such an undersea cable functioning? Uh -huh. I'm glad you asked. There are dozens of comparable undersea cables around the world, mostly in Europe, okay. several, yeah. in the several in the mainland of the United States. And how long is the longest of those? Since the 1950s, it was the first DC cable between an island in Sweden and the mainland, about 200 miles. 200 miles. Great. Thank you. Okay, uh, Representative Lee. Uh, thank you. Just, um, just to be clear, are you speaking on behalf of HECO as well, or just NextEra? No, sir, I'm not. On behalf of NextEra. Just NextEra. And uh, just noting, obviously, uh, HECO's most recent, um, I want to say opposition to the cable, but Basically, they said we can achieve our energy goals, renewable energy goals, and price reductions without the need for a cable. Um, does Nextera at this point, have you done the due diligence to know which way you want to go and which pencils out best for you? Representatively, we have not. We, we've done the original analysis that we did. We, we recognize, acknowledge that they've done different analysis that reaches different conclusions. Um, we have not got to the bottom of whether or not we agree with that or not. And let's say for a minute that um, this bill doesn't pass and you have the potential to move ahead with neighbor island projects or a cable to Maui or wherever makes sense best. Of the investment that's potentially being made um, by Nextera in the islands, is there money that you have or, or potential investments to be made on the neighbor islands in, in particular projects identified? Uh, what, what sort of projects, representatively? Could be anything from wind to solar to who knows. Yes, what. sir. We, as a, in the ordinary course of business, are pursuing a portfolio, have over a number of years pursued a portfolio of renewable generation projects in Hawaii. And that's just across all islands? Uh, not all islands. Um, we, we've, said, we've actually said before Oahu, Maui, and the Big Island. Does that change at all, uh, with or without the cable? Uh, eventually it might, if it was, you know, if it was, uh, yes, eventually it might. At this point, we just, our, our approach is we want to create a series of options, you know, for next era and for the state. And thank you very much. And um, it just, there was no one testifying on behalf of HECO here today, unless there's somebody in the audience. Okay, if not, okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Any other questions, follow-up? Yeah, yeah. Come on. But I don't know who to ask it to. We'll just ask the world and we'll see. <laughs> we would go to probably because we, along with this, if we're going to do away with this, well, the inner island cable, there was also a bill at the same time that we passed to diversify, to unify the rates amongst the islands. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to do away with that also because without the cable, there's no reason for spreading the cost. The increased costs on the Big Island to Oahu, to uniform the rates. My understanding is that you have to have a connection between islands in order to have a common set of rates. And right now, the depth of the ocean between Maui and the Big Island is 600 feet deeper than the deepest laid cable. And while technically you can lay a cable between Maui and the Big Island, 
you cannot pick it up to repair it. Therefore, you can't insure it. And therefore, it is not feasible today to lay the cable. But it may be in 10 years that it's cost effective to lay and insure a cable. But that is certainly premature at this point. Just like it's premature that Kauai could be attached to Oahu because of the nature of the channel. Right now, today, technically, you could only do Oahu, Kaholawe, Maui, Lanai, and Molokai. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, I don't know how, who would answer that question. Well, I mean, the, this thing, as the one who introduced this bill, I mean, the intent behind it was to mm -hmm. look at Personally, between you I and mean, you've heard my spiel before, but Maui Island, Oahu Island does, I think, make sense to explore for an underseen cable. But what my concern is is to have a mechanism that would allow, theoretically, a charge to be assessed for this cable when nothing concrete has been put on the table. There's been differing opinions as to the feasibility. So the intent isn't to shut up conversation of this idea potentially is to ensure that the rate mechanism isn't engaged so rate payers aren't paying for something, which clearly at this point is well, theoretical, yeah. It's not quite theoretical because the docket we're in right now, 2013-0393, is asking the ratepayers to pay for the studies on the Oahu Maui cable. Mm -hmm. If we are effective and win before the PUC, there will be no fee paid by ratepayers for that. If we're unsuccessful, then there will be a fee for the studies, which HECO says are no longer needed, but they did the studies anyway. That, hence the bill. Yes, exactly. Just one quick dealing. question. Thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Gleason, is Lanai on the table as well? So, uh, Representative Thielen, our position on that, and we're on the record, is we think a cable, uh, a, a, you know, a two-way cable to Maui could make sense. Uh, the analysis we've done suggests it does make sense. I think it makes a lot more sense than a cable to Lanai. We've said that. We are not pursuing a cable to Lanai. Um, if we were a utility, in, if Next Era were a utility in the state and the commission asked us to, to do a cable to Lanai, I'm, I'm not going to rule out that that could never happen, but that is not something we're pursuing. So I guess that's a long way around of saying it is still on the table, but you're it's not It's not our place to take it, right it off, to take it off the table, but it's not something we're pursuing. Thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> and may I have my bill back? <laughs> oh, yes, ma'am. Sorry. <laughs> Any other questions on this subject? If not, we'll go ahead and take a recess.